There are four types of intermolecular forces, ion dipole, dipole-dipole, London dispersion, and hydrogen bonding forces. All of these are electrostatic in nature, which means that they deal with the distribution of electric charge among chemical species. So let's go ahead and just take these in order. Ion dipole forces, which I'll abbreviate as IDFs from now on, exist between an ion and a partial charge on the end of a polar molecule. In other words, they exist between an ion and a dipole, hence the name. Ion dipole forces are important for solutions of ionic substances in polar liquids. For example, an aqueous solution of potassium chloride, which has lots of water in it. We also have potassium ions and chloride ions that are floating around in solution separate from each other. We know that oxygen is far more electronegative than hydrogen, which means there is a partial negative charge on this oxygen and a partial positive charge on each of the two hydrogens. And because of that, there is a slight attraction between the ions in the solution and the different ends of the water molecule. Those rather tiny attractions are in this case called ion dipole forces. Those dotted lines that I've shown there, those represent a slight attraction. That is, those are representing the ion dipole forces. Now, those bonds, those forces, are not permanent. I call them momentary kissage when we're talking about substances in solution. In other words, there's a slight attraction between the potassium ion and this oxygen atom and then of course everything is in random motion and so then that potassium ion moves away and more ion dipole forces can be established. Dipole dipole forces exist between neutral polar molecules. For example on the right side of the screen here hydrogen sulfide. This is very similar in some ways to ion dipole forces in the sense that sulfur being more electronegative and hydrogen being less electronegative, there is an attraction between the sulfur atom on one molecule and a hydrogen atom on another. And that little attraction, again which I've represented with dotted lines, is called a dipole-dipole force. Typically these tend to be weaker than ion dipole forces. As the dipole moment, that is the polarity, increases, then the strength of the dipole-dipole forces is also going to increase. And when the strength of those intermolecular forces, the dipole-dipole forces, increases, the boiling point and melting point are both going to go up. Another example is phosphine, which has this chemical formula, pH3. Again, there is an attraction between the more electronegative phosphorus, at least we would predict from the table that phosphorus is more electronegative than hydrogen, and that little attraction we call a dipole-dipole force. London dispersion forces exist between all molecules, but are the only forces between nonpolar molecules. And you can see in the upper right there, I have an actual photograph of some London dispersion forces. When we're talking about LDFs, this is what we're dealing with. The motion of electrons causes instantaneous dipoles, which induce dipoles on nearby molecules. London dispersion forces increase with increasing molar mass. Let's use a very bad analogy to try and illustrate this point. If we imagine the electron cloud around a nucleus as flubber, we can think of that cloud as not being perfectly symmetric at every instant. At one particular instant there might be more electrons, let's say, on the left side of the atom, as we see here in this picture of flubber. There are more electrons on our left side than on our right. And what that does is that means that the left side of the atom has a tiny bit of a negative charge compared to the right side. Well, right next to that atom there's another atom. And so if 
this part of the atom is negatively charged, won't that tend to push the electrons from the next atom further away, which will give that a partial positive charge on the right side, and there will be a little attraction right there, an instantaneous attraction. Because, of course, in the next instant, the flubber electron cloud is going to shift another direction. That's why we have in this statement up here the word instantaneous dipole. Polarizability is a term that deals with the ease with which the charge distribution can be distorted. The ease with which we can distort the electron cloud, the electron flubber cloud. Massive atoms with lots of electrons exhibit high polarizability. In other words, if you only have a little flubber, instantaneous dipoles are not very strong. If you have a lot of electron cloud flubber, and you would if you were a rather massive atom, like iodine, let's say, then that cloud can shift a lot more, causing stronger instantaneous dipoles. Hydrogen bonding forces are the last one. Hydrogen bonding forces are often considered to be the strongest intermolecular force. They are a special class of dipole-dipole forces. They exist between a hydrogen atom in a polar bond and an unshared electron pair on a nearby small highly electronegative ion or atom such as hold the phone fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen. Hold the phone. Get it? Right? Phone. Hold the phone. That's the only time you can have hydrogen bonding. In other words, the bare proton of hydrogen is attracted to unshared electron pairs on neighboring molecules. And the small size of that bare proton allows close proximity, which allows for a strong bond. Hydrogen bonding forces are important in many structures, including that of proteins and DNA. Let's summarize ion dipole forces, dipole dipole forces, London dispersion forces, and hydrogen bonding. Ion dipole forces exist between ions and solvent molecules for salts dissolved in polar liquids. Dipole dipole forces exist between polar molecules, but not for polar molecules with HF or HO or HN bonds. London dispersion forces exist between all molecules, but they are the only intermolecular forces between nonpolar molecules. London dispersion forces increase with increasing molecular mass, that is, with increasing number of electrons. And finally, hydrogen bonding exists between polar molecules containing HF bonds or HO bonds or HN bonds.